Here with reaction, Fox News contributor, former House Speaker Newt Gingrich. You know, I look at the, the seriousness of this, and I watch this guy, and I can't even comprehend how people cannot see that he is not fit for this job. Never mind everything that he said, how embarrassing he's been. You know, the, the, oh, oh, some hot ground. Man, hot ground here, man. And, oh, I almost lost my 67 Corvette. I can really relate to what happened in, in Maui, really, Mr. Speaker? Seriously? Look, I, I think this visit to Maui, frankly, is just plain frightening. Uh, how can you have a commander-in-chief who is totally out of touch with reality, who makes up a story which is a lie, who has no understanding of the scale of the disaster which has occurred, who is uh, literally no, uh, has no empathy for the human beings around him. Uh, and I think, uh, and of course, as you point out, can't even stay awake. Um, now, I think that people need to look at this not as a political problem, but as a national problem. We have a commander in chief. Uh, it makes you wonder who's making the decisions in the White House. I personally have a hunch it's Barack Obama. Uh, and you have to wonder. Um, how is the system running in a real crisis? How could Joe Biden uh, decide anything? It would all be delegated. Uh, and frankly, as an American, I'm ashamed. Uh, Chris and I have been to Lahaina many times. It's a wonderful town. Uh, it's a great historic place. We love Maui, uh, and we love uh, that part of the coast. And to see it destroyed like this, to realize that almost like Pompeii in, in Italy, you, you have families, entire families, who were burned to death, who were found. Now, I, I saw one report that firefighters are having a very hard time psychologically going from house to house because the scenes of little children, the scenes of families who had gathered in the bathtub in the shower trying to find one last place where there was water. I mean, all of this. And then you learn two big things. One, that the uh, electric company had asked for several years for approval to spend the money getting rid of the invasive grasses that are at the heart of the fire. And they've been turned down because the money was supposed to be spent on going green while they went red and killed people. And second, that you did have a, a former Obama official who was a water resource manager who for five hours refused to release the water, who, who wanted to talk about uh, how do we make sure that everything's worked out all right? Uh, and, and frankly, there's a movement among some of the left-wing nutcakes in Ohio and in, in uh, Oahu and Maui to not allow water to be used to fight fires. Now, I mean, can you explain that to me. Uh, they value the uh, the water going to the taro crop more than the water protecting human beings. I just think that's an extraordinarily uh, psychological conditions, not ideological. It's psychological. You know, I, 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 I always used to say there's no such thing as a stupid question, but this is a stupid question. And that would be, if this was a Republican, if this was Donald Trump, what would the reaction be, Mr. Speaker? Well, we saw it with George, with George W. Bush in, in Katrina. I mean, the, the New York Times would be page one. Uh, all the major networks would have horrendous stories. Every single uh, person out there who serves on, you know, at NBC, uh, CBS, uh, would be condemning this heartless, cruel. I mean, you have, but you have to say to yourself, this is beyond just being heartless. This guy is nuts. He's out of touch with reality. I mean, how can you stand in Lahaina, surrounded by death? And talk about your 67 Corvette. I mean, it really worries me that this is the guy who's commander-in-chief for the most powerful military in the world. And believe me, every leader on the planet watches Joe Biden collapsing and knows that the U.S. is beginning to be available as a victim because his commander-in-chief, in fact, is sort of a—I I would say he's closer to being uh, a sleeper-in-chief than he is to being a commander-in-chief. Let me ask you about, and I'm going to get into this with John Solomon in a minute, what I believe are real bribery and money laundering allegations uh, against Joe Biden. We know he lied when it came to the issue of 
ever speaking to his son, brother, or anybody for that matter. He lied as a candidate, lied as a president. Uh, we see these millions and millions of dollars in deals from foreign entities, many hostile regimes towards this country. Um, we find out that the original plan, the New York Times actually broke this story, uh, that the guy investigating for four years was a friend of Bo Biden. Uh, many in his office apparently knew the Bidens, and he was ready to deep six all the charges against Hunter um, until the IRS whistleblowers blew the lid off it. Then he went to plan B. Plan B was, oh, okay, uh, we'll just, um, uh, we'll, we'll have a, a sweetheart deal, and they bury immunity into the deal. Um, in the gun diversion portion of, of this plea deal. Uh, and then underneath that, the judge looks at it and says to the prosecutor, have you ever seen a deal like this before? No, I never have. And now we're discovering, too, that, well, you know, the Hunter's lawyers were saying, you do know if this is brought to trial, we're going to ask Joe Biden to testify. He'll be a fact witness in, in all of this. Um, and that, you know, they would force Joe to testify. And then they wanted, Hunter's lawyers wanted the Biden DOJ to prosecute. What does this look like to you, Mr. Speaker? Look, I don't think it's complicated. Uh, first of all, Hunter has no capacity to be grateful, no capacity to think beyond his own uh, addicted self. So he's going to do whatever he has to do to try to protect himself. But, but let's, let's be honest for a minute. I mean, I ask every American, you look at all the information. It's not complicated. Joe Biden is a crook. His family are crooked. They run a—but it's basically—it's it's ironic that Donald Trump's being charged under RICO, while, in fact, Joe Biden has been running an organized crime operation. I think if you watch The Sopranos, take out the murders, and watch the rest of The Sopranos, you'll understand the Bidens. Uh, this whole notion that it's really complicated, it's really confusing. No, it's not. Uh, Burisma, a Ukrainian company in deep trouble, is paying a million dollars a year to Hunter. Hunter's father, who's vice president of the United States, picks up the phone, apparently under three different aliases, using a phone which some people believe was uh, 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 Peter Schweitzer, among others, believe was probably paid for by one of Hunter Biden's companies. So here, sitting in the White House, is the vice president of the United States talking on a secret phone, using an alias, talking to the president of Ukraine on behalf of the company which is paying his son a million dollars. Now, how hard is it to understand that? I think virtually any honest well, American will understand facts, immediately. Though. This is crooked. And Hunter, at the time, is an admitted drug addict with no experience in oil, energy, gas, uh, at all, or Ukraine. Amazing that you can make that much money, and then you can make money from China and Russia. And Joe said, oh, I never spoke to my son, but he's meeting with these oligarchs at the Cafe Milano uh, and calling into all these business meetings just to talk about the weather. Speaker Gingrich, great to see you, my friend. Thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.